Welcome to the Unsung Photographer. Hey everybody, here I am, Bob Kearns, the Unsung Photographer. Oh. Anyway, it's just past Halloween, and today's video is basically going to be about retouching. Uh, we just had a workshop this past weekend. It was a really great workshop with uh, great photographers and uh, uh, just a herd of, maybe that's a bad term, but a group of like some of the best models uh, we've gotten together in a while. And it was a lot of fun and everybody had a good time. And uh, we were supposed to do some retouching. And that was part of the program for the day. But we were all having such a great time shooting uh, that uh, folks kind of ran out of time towards the end of the day. And I thought that this would be a nice little supplement to that and something for the rest of the universe might be interested in. So here we go. We're going to do a little retouching. On the screen here, you can see one of the shots from the workshop. And this is the lovely Bella G. She was one of our models in a very nice sweater. And we're going to go through and we're going to retouch this one and then post it for her so that she has it for her portfolio. So this is Lightroom. We've imported the pictures. We haven't done anything to them. Uh, I think I've added my copyright information and essentially my uh, basic uh, default development scheme I have saved as a preset which is kind of neither here nor there. That's just my preference. So I'm just going to hit reset here. So everything's back to neutral. And you can see it's not a big change. <coughs> Maybe a little less contrasty. So let's make this big. I have my Wacom tablet here in front of me. I'm using my art pen. And we're going to zoom in here and look at her face. What we're going to do here before we export it for editing is we might do a little color correction if it was really bad, but it's not. Um, out of the camera, this is a pretty nice photograph to begin with. Uh, we can maybe lift the exposure up a little bit, brighten it up. Just a hair, not too much. Skin tones are nice. I don't think we're going to do anything else to it. Uh, we'll take it right into Photoshop because the lighting is good. She looks good. Her skin tones are good. Uh, the exposure's good. This is one of the pluses of paying attention to what you do on set, what you do with your lights, and getting it right in camera is now I don't have to fuss with it. So let's go ahead and send that off to Photoshop. Now, Command E sends that off to Photoshop. That's my default editor. I have other ones installed here, plugins and whatnot, but we're not going to go that route quite yet. We may look at one or two plugins, uh, but they're optional. And you know what? They cost money. So I don't know that uh, you have to have this stuff. If you're in a hurry or um, you're turning these around for cash and you need to speed up your workflow, then plugins can be a worthwhile investment. <clears throat> but in this case, uh, if you're doing this for yourself or uh, for practice or for... Uh, in a low volume situation, uh, you, you don't really need to uh, go crazy. So here we go. Here's our background. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a blank layer. So we'll go down here, add a layer. <clears throat> good old layer one. And what we're going to do with good old layer one is we're going to go up here and select the spot healing brush tool. And we're going to go around and we're going to zoom in, which is command plus. Boop, 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 boop. And we're going to get rid of little flaws, a little scar, a little this, a little that. Well, here's a hair that's kind of like, where'd that come from? So notice I'm taking short little strokes there so we don't wind up with this, like, this long blurry line from this tool. Just light little strokes, getting rid of that. Our Bella here has pretty flawless skin. And knock you right on the floor with those eyeballs, I think. And we'll just get rid of a couple little 
And this is arbitrary. You don't necessarily need to get rid of like little freckles and stuff. I'm mostly just doing this for demonstration purposes. <clears throat> and at the end of the day, uh, if you were to put this in a fashion magazine, uh, they may want the model to be totally flawless. I let myself prefer a little humanity. And again, doing this for demonstration purposes. Anytime somebody's got a black sweater on, you got to look for white fuzzy things. So they just make it look grungy. If, and there's not even many of those. And there's a white spot that might even be part of the graphic. We'll just get rid of it for now. <clears throat> okay, well, that was easy. She looks good. Oh, here's another wild hair up here. Let's get rid of that. And know that we're doing this all on a separate layer. So that when you have your tool selected, you have to go up here up the top and go sample all layers. So that you can get the information from the background layer into this blank layer. And you can just get rid of a couple of wild, crazy hairs here. This is a quick and easy way if there's just a couple. Uh, if you have more than that, uh, the other option would be to get your brush tool. Right? Uh, select Darken. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba, darken. Right where we have an opacity of 41, a flow of 46. That's pretty good. Uh, hit the Alt button. Pick up the color near the hair. Make your brush a little larger. You can use that using the bracket keys, or in my case, I have a uh, have a preset on my Wacom tablet, Wacom tablet, W A C O M. If you're going to be doing retouching on a regular basis, do yourself a favor, invest in the tablet. And you can see this darkens hair; it makes them less obvious. And here's a punch here. I'm going to bring the brush out. You can see it just darkens them up a little bit. It doesn't necessarily eliminate them, but and then you want to resample close to where the hairs are so that you don't have blotchy colors. So continue to resample that color. Now I have the button on my pen set. I can use that instead of pressing the Alt key, or I can just kind of lay my hand over the keyboard and press the Alt key when I need to. Whatever's comfortable for you works. <clears throat> All right, so we're not going to go too crazy here because it's like anything else. If you do too much of it, it starts to look unnatural. I mean, you don't want hairs that are flying all over the place, but if it looks too flat, uh, it, it just doesn't look right. So that looks pretty good so far. Now we're going to do a couple of other different things to this. Let me talk about what, what the plan is here. Now just looking at this picture, once we've done a little bit of cleanup... We might, we might want to lighten the eyes a little bit. I, I like that smoky look, so we're not going to eliminate it entirely. Uh, we're going to bring up little bits of contrast here and there. We're going to do some skin smoothing, right? Uh, we're going to do a little dodging and burning. Uh, we're going to boost the highlights down here on the jewelry, give it a little sparkle. And that's pretty much the plan for this, because this is a pretty good photograph starting out with. Oh, here's some other flyaway hairs over here. So remember, sample near the hair. Zooming in. Command plus zooms in. Command minus zooms out. Those are two. If you're going to use Photoshop, remember those two. Command plus zooms in. Command minus zooms out. And when you get into uh, masks, you're going to find that... Uh, white conceals and black reveals so that's the other most common uh, Photoshop mantra in the universe try not to leave hairs like not attached to anything so they're floating out in nowhere All right well, here's a couple that are sticking out and we're just gonna darken them we're not gonna really make them go away so you'll still get an idea that they're here but what looks so bad? There you go. Pretty nice. All right. Now we're going to hit Command Zero, <coughs> which zooms out for the whole uh, photograph. All right. Looking pretty good. All right. Now here comes a magical one. Command E basically merges those two. Right, undo that. 
Watch. Command E. In this case, it's actually flattens them because there's only two two layers. So we do Command Z. The other option would be ready for this one. Shift. Option. Command or alternate control if you're on a PC. God help you. Shift. Option. Command E. And that will combine all the layers down below into a, a, a single layer above sort of a global merge and now we have a copy of what we've done with all the flaws removed and the wild hair has gone away and we'll start working on this okay now that we've we've prepped it my next step would usually be to go to one of my actions and we can see that here WK photo high pass retouch is our next step so let me demonstrate what that does. So let's just hit it. Watch our layers down here. Watch what goes on. Boom. And it runs. And now all of a sudden we've got two more layers. One of these is a high pass layer. And uh, the other is a uh, essentially just a copy of this layer here. <clears throat> so that's what the action does. Let me do that by hand so that you know what goes on. So what I would do here is I would make a du two duplicates of this layer. Command J, Command J. Then the top layer, we'll go to Filter, Other, High Pass. All right. Now you want to be able to, let me zoom in here. You can see texture here, and you can even see a little color. So that's maybe a little much. So let's back off a little bit here, just a little bit. So we just kind of see lines of texture. This is a uh, Nikon D800. So this is a 36 megapixel image. So about three and a half, I know, is, is about uh, what I want. Eh, 3.7, that's, that's, that's okay. But you notice we still see some color here. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go to Image with just that layer selected. Adjustments. And desaturate, which is Shift Command U. So instead of doing that, we can just do Shift Command U, and you'll see that color disappear. Now the image is black and white, monochrome. So now we're going to change our blending uh, method here. To Linear light. Boom. And you can see, if you zoom in here, that this has really sharpened our image. But what it has also done is it will preserve texture as we go ahead and we go ahead and we smooth the skin. So that's essentially what WK Photo, High Pass Retouch, the action, that's exactly what that accomplishes. <clears throat> and that's all that it does. There's no magic there. Now, my next step would we go down to the layer below and go ahead and pick the area selection tool, the lasso. And I can lasso portions of this image here. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. And then go filter blur Gaussian or Gaussian blur depending upon where you are from and you can see that's pretty blurred that's like at a 7.2 and if we zoom in here at our preview there's still plenty of texture but it's not so blotchy so let's go more extreme now you can start to see there's a distinct uh, difference there uh, that's not really what we want. We want to keep it down around here someplace. So the smooth, the skin area in the preview window is very smooth, right? Really over, uh, <clears throat> overdone. It's very, very smooth. But uh, you have a genuine continuous tone down here. You don't have any blotches. Uh, the other thing that you want to realize here is when we're doing our selection, let's go cancel this. You want to make sure that you have some feather on here. Now this is a little low, 2.6 pixels. 
Uh, we're going to increase that. Oh, I don't know. Uh, let's make it, I don't know, say 15 pixels. Okay. This way, when we apply it, you won't see any lines. So we've got our selection. We've got it feathered somewhere between 10 and 20 pixels, depending upon the resolution of your image. And then we want to go filter, blur, Gaussian, Gaussian blur. And we want to look at this and make sure that we have a nice, even skin tone. But we don't have it so much that it's obviously like different. See how it's the tone is, the color is different. It's almost like one color now. We want differences in color. We don't want one color, but we want it to be smooth. So go ahead and watch. You can see, you can see it's killing the highlight a little bit. Which is okay a little. No, I still want a little highlight there. So we go ahead and do that. Now, that's pretty amazing. Now we can go ahead and lasso other parts of the face. Notice I'm doing this in like related sections. Right? And just hit Command F and that will repeat that blur. See how it's go right smooth for you? Boom, boom. We do the forehead. Don't go into the hairs. Stay away from them. Command F, boom, smooth, right? Get the chin down here. Command F, All right? I'll let these select that. Now let's go ahead and look at that face a little bit. The face is pretty smooth. What didn't we do? We didn't do the, didn't do the nose. Command F. And you can see that, if anything, she's a little over smoothed. Right? So let's say she is over smoothed. Let's say we, we went too far crazy cray cray. Because that happens when you're doing this stuff. And you know, go back and go, oh my god, I really went nuts. This is horrible. Let's do a shoulder piece here. And we stay off the shirt. Remember, we just want to kind of like do generic areas here. Command F will smooth her out. You gotta watch. You know, if you do an area like this, you see how things smooth. You want to stay away from the hairs. You don't want them blurry, right? You can see how we're going here. Go up there. Boom. Command F. Boom. Deselect. And she's looking, you know, really smooth. But to the point now. And we come down and do the legs. I'm just doing this as quickly as I can here now for demonstration purposes. Zoom, 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 yeah, da, 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 right? And you can see how much smoother that is, right? La, 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 okay, then we'll back out. And uh, maybe she's a little too smooth. Maybe she's a little mannequin-y looking there, like I'm like a mannequin. Not, not the very best, so all you do there is you take your layer that you've just done the smoothing on whoops and you just let's get into her face here a little bit command plus command plus command plus space bar slide her down here and I'm going to reduce the opacity of this layer just a little bit and that's about that layers at about 52 percent now and she looks good. Not over smooth, but smooth enough. She looks natural. I like that. Now that took us probably what? 10 minutes to do all that. Maybe 15. So let's just throw all that work hard work away. <clears throat> and let's use our action. We know what that does. Okay, that part is done. Now let's click on that our layer that we would normally smooth. Oh, what happened there? Oh, I hit something twice. That's my mistake. Let me just get rid of those. One more time. I know what I did. I ran my action twice. Bad boy. Let me click on this layer. And now we're going to show you what you use a plugin for. In this particular case, it's an Imaginomics portraiture. 
this is pretty much a one-click wonder. You, you don't really find many of those. There it is. There's our young lady. I have it set on smooth and high, uh, which is kind of bold. If you're using this by yourself, you would never put it that high. I have the warmth cranked up just a little bit to warm her skin tones a little. Uh, because of what she has on, uh, it already it develops a mask for you. And you can select the skin area where the mask is generated, right? So you want a mask in all those skin tone areas. You even want it kind of down here. And, or you can adjust it manually. You can come back here and just put it on everywhere but like the blackest parts. Which is okay with me. And here's your mask. <clears throat> I don't worry about this mask too much because I can generate my own really easily. And that's part of the process. So that's done. Click OK. And all your smoothing is completed. It's done. There's nothing else you have to do as far as skin smoothing. So that saves a lot of time. And it doesn't look too different than what we originally did. It's a little overdone. And I that's from having it turned up so high. But I like to be able to select my level. So now I can do the same thing. I can take the opacity of that image down until I'm comfortable with it. That looks pretty good. And we're at just 50%. So that's pretty nice. We're, we're in really, really, really good shape there. And let's go down and look at the dark parts of the image here. Um, space bar. Slide down. Our legs look good. Everything looks good. But you know what? Her hair over here is a little blurry. So I'm going to add a, a mask by clicking on this little devil right here adds a mask layer. Uh, excuse me, a layer, a mask to the layer. I'm going to go click on that. I'm going to paint uh, in black. So I'm going to hit default colors, D for default colors. X switches your foreground and your background colors. I'm going to select a brush and I'm going to put this on normal. I'm going to change my opacity to 100%. I'm going to change my flow to 100%. Maybe make my brush a little bigger. And I'm going to brush over the hair here. And you can watch it just get slightly sharpened. Because I'm eliminating... Really, we're looking through to the layer underneath this. We are not... Um, basically taking the whatever portraiture did to the hair and throwing it away. So we're just painting up here. And if you want to check, you hit your uh, option key, hold it down, click on the mask, and you can see what you're painting here. And if you've got any places you've missed, you want to go in and zoom in, that's okay. You can see your paint in black there. All right, that's pretty good. You can just click on your other image. Click back on your mask because there's a couple other areas we want to eliminate any softening. And it's essentially the eyelashes and the eyes. Eyebrows, I want to take that off, right? So I'm going to paint the eyes in. All right. And then the eyebrows, we want to bring that sharpness back. Man, this girl's got some piercing eyes. All right. Pretty good. Then we'll zoom back out. She looks good. And now we're going to do <clears throat> what we did earlier and create a layer that is a combination of uh, all the layers beneath it. So it's like a totally merged layer. So we hit Shift. This is the tough one. Shift, Option, Command, E. Or Shift, Alt, Control, E. If you have a PC, God help you. <clears throat> there you go. Now we have a completely merged layer. So we can shut everything off underneath if we wanted to. We're done with that for now. I don't throw it away. In case I find something later I missed, I can go back and fix it. There she is. She's almost done. Now we go into our next action. Our next action seems a little more complicated. That would be WK Photo Dodge Burn and Color. So let's zoom out 
and I want you to watch the layers panel down here and I'm going to click on that see if I can make this a little better for you to see on the video I know it's hard dodge burn color creates three layers dodge burn and color surprise these are all adjustment layers so let me show you what one is and you realize that you could do this manually it just takes a couple minutes you would go let me get rid of them you would go adjustment layer adjustment add an adjustment layer and let's say the first thing we want to do is we would do the dodge so what we're really looking for is brightness and contrast we would add that the next thing we do is we make it clip which is a fancy word for saying we just hook it up to that just that one layer and brightness we're going to kick that up to say 30 percent I call it 35 for now I think the uh, action does is 30 and then we're going to go here and we're going to go into this mask and we're going to invert it so that it's all black so it doesn't do anything so let me zoom out so you can see what that last part did right if I invert the mask when it first comes up command invert command I everything's brightened by using my slider brightness down up I'm going to leave it oh, it's 32 close enough and I'm going to invert the mask and you can see it just basically doesn't accomplish anything let's turn that off and on you can see it's not doing anything now the only way I can get to do anything is to go over here to my brush tool. I'm going to turn my opacity down, let's say, into the high 30s. It's a 37. And this somewhere high 40s, mid 40s in that ballpark for uh, flow. And I'm going to paint in white in my mask. And I'm going to add highlights. And you can watch the highlights start to come out. Any place I see a highlight, I'm going to paint normal opacity. There we go. I might want to make this a little, a little more honking here. Now, normally I wouldn't be so aggressive, uh, but uh, for demonstration purposes, I want you guys to see this. All right. And video doesn't always give you such subtle, allow for subtleties very well. All right, so far so good. White on black. You can slowly see it getting brighter. And now we're going to add some highlights under the eyes. Again, I'm turning this up just so it shows up on the video better. <clears throat> go back to our painting tool here and start to brighten up some of the areas under the eyes. Not so bad. And anytime you see highlights, you want to add a little brightness to them. Right, and this is a nice soft brush. So it's it's a big round brush with really soft edges. And again, any highlight you see, I want to accentuate the highlights. If it's a highlight, yeah, make a highlighter. <laughs> Isn't that clever? Same, same all the way down. Bring those highlights up. Now, essentially the technique here and what we're doing is we're doing what they call contouring. We bring our brights up and we're going to bring our shadows down. And what this does is create depth very very nicely here there you go and you can see we're bringing that rim up a little bit All right just a little bit 
And I'm gonna scoot back up. The only place I want to get here is I want to bring some. I want to bring a little sparkle into this jewelry here. So I'm gonna get make the brush smaller. I'm gonna bring those highlights up. Make them a little shiny. I'm gonna go into the eyes here. Just little tiny catch lights in here. We want to brighten those up. She has some silver under her eye. Our makeup artist, let me tell you, absolutely wonderful. This was all done under the auspices of the Philadelphia uh, <clears throat> Glamour Photography Group. And my buddy Al Hafner was uh, helpful in organizing this and turning it into uh, a really nice uh, event. The other thing we want to find is this moisture on the lips. We want to bring this up. We really want those highlights to be pretty prevalent. Okay. Oops. So that's basically how we would do our dodging. And then we would add another adjustment layer, which would do this with the exact same uh, function, a brightness and contrast, and we would make that darken, and we would do our burn with that. And then we would do a hue saturation layer with the saturation turned up to about 20, 30%, and that would be our color layer. So let's delete that. And let's go ahead and show you what the action does. Action. Zoom in. Dodge, burn, and color. Bang, there they are. You can ask for more than that. Uh, I'm pretty proud of that. That being the case, <clears throat> let's go ahead and dodge. Hit D for our default colors. We want to be painting in white. Our brush tool. Uh, I'm going to turn this down because this is probably going to be a finished product here, so I don't want to exaggerate too much. And we're going to zoom in, Command Plus. Make our brush a little bigger, bracket keys, or in my case, I have a uh, area defined on my Wacom tablet. And you can see we're going to bring those highlights up, make the shiny shinier, right? Anytime we see a highlight, we make it highlightier. See, there you go. You see them bringing that right up. Pretty impressive. We're going to do under the eyes here. Under the eyes is always a triangle. Right. Again, you want to follow those natural highlights. Pretty nice. All right, little highlights. Bring it up. All right, bring that up. That's pretty good. Highlights down here. Highlights on the back. Highlights here. You've seen this before. Go much quicker. All right. Shiny jewelry. Any place you want to sparkle, you bring it back up. Okay, and that's pretty good. I'm not worried about the shiny parts on the um, t-shirt. I don't think they're important. Um, any place you want to add depth, you want to bring the highlights up. <clears throat> pretty impressive. Now let's go to burn. Now you're going to see what the darkening uh, does. <clears throat> if it's darker, if it's dark, we make it darker. All right? It's kind of the same plan. Cheeks, we're gonna make them a little darker. The face, under the chin. Again, you can start to see there's more and more shape going in here. So, oops, default. There we go. There it is. Pretty impressive. Any place there's a dark area, we make it a little darker. And when we do that, we add depth. I'm going to make a big, bigger brush here and darken that whole area. See how we're starting to add the depth here? Depth, depth, depth. 
Same with the legs. Darken the darks. Light in the lights. Pretty impressive here. <clears throat> now we go to color. Color is a very subtle thing. Um, it's easily blown out. And this thing generally, first pass, can be a little much right off the bat. And I use it mostly just to kind of see what I'm doing. Sometimes I'll add a little to the cheeks just to bring out the rouge a bit. A lot of times I'll come into the eyes, though. In this case, her eyes are so wonderfully dark. I don't really want to add a lot of color in there. So I might add a little to the eyeliner. And then I almost always wind up taking the opacity down here a little bit. Okay? All right. So, we've uh, set the uh, opacity down a little bit and settled that color out. So, let's zoom out here. Boom. And let's do a little before and aftering. And the easy way to do that is to go down here and hold down the option key. Click that first layer. That's before. That's after. That's before. That's after. You can see it's kind of subtle differences. But it all looks pretty good. So, now for the Brave. I don't recommend you do this. I don't recommend you flatten these things, especially while you're learning, because as, as you get a little better, you may want to go back and redo something in a photograph you have. But in my case, I've got thousands and thousands of these, so I'm going to actually go in and flatten this image. Discarding layers, okay, and I'm going to wind up with one layer. And then go File, Save. Saves pretty quickly. Photoshop, quit. Let's fire, uh, let's go back to Lightroom, which is running the whole time, by the way. And there she is. And you can see down here, it knows there's two of these. All right? And I'm going to mark that as an edited tool. Well, that's a two. That's a three. <coughs> uh, they get a four when I get them up on uh, the website. And let's do a compare here. We hit these two and we hit N. There's your before and after. Before, after, it's not a big difference. Um, again, because it came out of the camera pretty well, but it's a little more polished. Um, you can see the added contrast in the hair and the highlights is subtle, but you have a really nice uh, looking photograph. So there we go. There's Retouch 101. To do these compares in Lightroom, you select, uh, select one photograph. Uh, hit the command key or the shift key, in this case command key. Select that and you hit N, uh, the letter N on your keyboard and you will get the compare mode. If I hit G, I go back to the grid view. If I hit N, I go to my compare uh, view. If I hit D, it's develop. Now these are just quick shortcuts, so let's go back to our grid view. If I hit the tab key, my uh, toolbar is coming in on both sides there. That's all that is. If I wanted to do a uh, uh, comparison and then I wanted it to look uh, go full screen, I hit F and then I hit the L key and nothing happens, but I can hit F, hit the L key here. You can see the screen uh, lights change. Pretty nice. That just circles through in the L key. F key is full, full screen and back. Okay, uh, if you attend one of the workshops uh, in the future, I, I share the actions with my attendees. I don't really sell them. Uh, they're conveniences. You can certainly create them yourself when you get to the point where you understand how to do that. Um, from the Unsung Photographer, thanks a lot for watching and uh, come back next time. Later. Shall we begin? <laughs>